Let's talk about that. Today, I am thrilled to be hosting this uh, chat with uh, Felix Silla. Uh, and I'm sure you're all familiar with his uh, wonderful characters, um, Cousin It, um, Twicky from Buck Rogers, and a host of other characters. So, um, don't yeah. forget, don't forget Star Wars. Star Wars. Planet yeah. of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. And my cousin over there. <laughs> there you go, yeah. My cousin, one day. Oh, you forgot and this is, I have a visitor. I have a cousin yeah. coming to visit me you all the time. A character. They come with me all the time. Yeah. They follow me. <laughs> you know How that? are you doing? <laughs> and that's, uh, un oh, yeah. Okay. See? That's awesome. I knew it. So, so how are you guys doing? Everybody good? Everybody's yeah. okay? Or everybody you guys good? out there awake? How are you? Okay. How are you? Oh, how, how, am I? how am I? I'm great. I'm freezing, but I'm okay. I'm, you know what? I, I, everywhere I go, I forget to bring a jacket. It's That's really why it's going to be okay, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's then cold you come in inside these buildings, there's not too many people. Yeah. And it's freezing. It's like a frigidity, like, you know. But when the building fills up and then you're warm. So I don't know what you should do. Should bring a jacket or not? So I didn't bring it. I didn't bring it with me. So uh, now I'm. Layers oh, are only key. a couple more hours and I'll be going home, right? <laughs> That's Hi, right. Bill. Hi. And who do we have here? <laughs> we have a we Bill have... Diamond. Oh, wonderful. Okay, great. My um, friend Bill. Okay, welcome, Bill. Um, <laughs> so let's get started. Um, you've had a really incredible career. You've played so many characters. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your start? Well, the way uh, my career got started, uh, I, I was working with the circus. I came from Italy many, many years ago. And uh, I was living with my brother upstate in New York. And uh, uh, he took me to New York City, the Madison Square Garden, to see the circus. And I got hired just to work on the show. And then in 1962, I decided to, I had enough of it. And uh, we were playing in Los Angeles, California. I decided, I said, well, I don't need a circus anymore. I want to quit. So I stayed with a family that um, every year when the circus came to LA, they did a publicity for them. And I was a guy answering the phone or do this, do that. Uh, one day a gentleman came from MGM studio and he said, uh, they are looking for little people to do some, uh, some work, like stunt work. And I didn't have a car because I just moved to California in 1962. So a friend of mine drove me down to MGM studio and and they picked me as uh, one of the little guys to do some stunt work for the little boy. And that's how I started out. And then the Adams family came, and uh, the Russians are coming, and the Russians are coming. It was fun. And they, that's how it developed, you know. But we worked almost every day, five days a week. And we were standing in for little boys, you know, little kids. Right. What they do, stand in is like, when the, little, when the actor has to go to school, they, because they have to have schools every day, they use a little person to stand and do whatever to light up the camera, to light up, you know, the lights and the, set up the scene. So and then when the actor is a, uh, when ready to film, so you go sit down and they do the, do the film. That's what's called stand in. Also, they do stunt work. And that's where uh, uh, those days, that's where I made the money because I, well, they use a lot of kids in the movies, like in the 60s and 70s. Um, we worked quite a bit. And, you know, and then um, actually the Planet of the Apes came in 19, 1960, what was Seven. it, six, 68? Seven and eight. You yeah. started in 67. Okay. So I played one of the, um, with Charlton. Actually, I tell everybody I got to work with Moses. And a lot of people <laughs> says, I say, what are you talking about? Who's Moses? I says, yeah, Charlton Aston. I work with him. But, you know, it's, it's a joke. Uh, also, uh, uh, with the Adams Family, it was a lot of fun doing the show with the Adams Family. They were all friendly, nice people. I was going to ask you, yeah, like it was a real family because it seemed like everybody got along so well. And Yes, yeah. to me, it felt like a family. We got along, uh, we got along so well together. The only problem we did with the Adams Family, Uncle Fester over there, he used to fall asleep. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he ru he ruined so many takes, so many, so many scenes because when he was not involved in the set on the scene with us, he was like sitting on his chair somewhere, about ten, fifteen feet away, 
all of a sudden you hear like a railroad track, like a railroad coming in, they're snoring like, oh my God. So the director looks over and says, Jackie, shut up, you're losing it. Okay, so start filming again. Five minutes later, and he started snoring again. So they, they slap him on the head and say, go, go to your dressing room. And we'll, when we need you, we'll come and get you. So uh, that's how funny it was with the Adams family. Uh, also, also I also did Star Trek. This, oh, yes, the, uh, the original pilot yes. of the Star Trek, the that's cage. That's great, yeah. Yeah. I got to work with um, uh, Jeffrey Hunter. Um, that was for the and pilot, I, right? The, yes, the, pilot. the, the yes, cage, yeah. and I played one of the delusion. Yeah. So it was fun. And that, and that was like, you, you were just, it was just basically a shot of you, right? And it just, it took off from there. Yes, right? well, yeah. they, you know, the shot that I did, it was like, what are they called, perspective shot? Yeah, yeah it was long, a long shot. Yeah, they put you know, like little person somewhere, and it looked like the tunnel's like 10 miles long. That's why they make, you know, the reason they do that. Um, and a lot of people ask me if I did a movie with, uh, with uh, Clint Eastwood, um, uh, High Plane Drifter. I had, a, actually, I had, had an interview with the, uh, Mr. Eastwood and the producer at uh, Warner Brothers Studio, who talked for about an hour, and they, they, they gave me the script, said, it's yours if you want it. Um, so I did ask, uh, so when, uh, when is it going to start filming? It, can, it came together with some, uh, some other thing that I had going in New York. I was rehearsing for a play in which nothing happened to it, so I lost a good, you know, good show. Uh, every, day, every day of the week, and everywhere, you know, I'm, I'm walking someplace, people ask me, hey, did you do, uh, did you do the movie I Play in Drifter? I said, well, I'm not going to stand and explain it. He said, no, I'm sorry, but I was supposed to do it, but I didn't do it. So I just walk away. So, is it, is that, it true that you were in The Brood as well? Yes, I was. Oh, okay, yes. that's, yeah. oh, that's, that's one of my favorite films, yeah, actually. Yeah, <laughs> The Brood. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, I think it was filmed in Toronto. Uh, okay. One of the actors, Reed, uh, what was his name? Uh, well, yeah, I think that was The Brood. That's The yeah, Brood, right? I believe so, yeah. Uh, I understand that he ran across the street and mooning people with a big fur coat. <laughs> so I don't know if it was real or not, but somebody <laughs> said that's what happened. Yeah. Um, I, I've done a lot of work, uh, yeah. mostly stunt work, uh, doubling kids, and um, it, it's been, you know, it's been really good life, you know, the movie industry has been really good to me because not only we had a lot of fun in the 60s and 70s, it was, uh, all of a sudden it changed. Uh, it's not like it used to be, now it's different. Um, in those days, you know, like uh, if you know a director or producer or assistant director, they shake hands with say, Felix, I got some coming. In a couple of months, we want you to work with us. Just a handshake was fine, like a contract. Now it's different. It now really changed, and everything oh, I was. I won't shake hands with you anymore. No, I don't think you should because you're not going to give it's me a, a job anymore. Contract from now on. Oh, good. Where is it? I have one for you. It's over there. Okay. <laughs> so, so anyway, I mean, the, you know, the business really changed. The, you know, those days. Um, if you don't do something professionally, you know, what do you put in front of people's face? They don't understand. Now everything is like whatever you put on TV and everybody loves it. Now everything's like a pre-recorded claps, right? Clap, mm -hmm. or, right. A lapse yeah. pre-recorded. Laugh track. Um, that's, that's exactly what it is. It really changed like 100%. Um, I wanted to ask you about when it, well, it was one of my favorite characters was Twiki um, on Buck Rogers. I actually tuned in every, I think it was Sunday night, if I'm not mistaken, every oh. Sunday night I would watch Buck Rogers just for Twiki. Um, I, I imagine that was a really uh, great experience for you and like what was the costume like wearing it and um, I feel like you could have pranked a lot of people in your in, in Twiki's con. You, you, you said Sunday night, right? Was it Sunday was, night? No, no, I feel, was in it, the state, it was Thursday night. Was it Thursday night? Okay, yeah, I wonder. Then. I'm wondering if I because it was when I was a kid, but I feel like it was a Sunday night screening. Mm, well, whatever. Yeah. It was but, many many years ago on yeah, Thursday night, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah Buck Rogers was nice. Um, yeah, uh, they were talking about putting in. Uh, you remember Battlestar Galactica? They had the oh, little yeah. monkey. Uh, Levy, um, they were they were thinking about put the little monkey in a suit. I mean, how can you how can you tell the monkey so you walk over there, walk over here? You know? How can you do that? So I was competing with the little monkey, and I competed with people in blinds. What I mean, with glasses on. 
But I, I knew a producer and uh, at, Uni at Universal Studio, that's the reason I got the job. Oh, okay. And so that, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, the costume wasn't that bad, and it could have been better, but mm -hmm. those days, you know, whatever the technology they had those days, they did a pretty good job compared to what they do today. I mean, today you could, you could make a movie out of with a 35 millimeter camera. I mean, really, really, you know, a digital camera. Uh, but those days, uh, whatever that they, they took them almost a day to do one scene on Buck Rogers. You know, when the the, the ship had fly, they have each move that takes so much time. It's almost one day to do it. You know, one day complete with day to do one scene. But right now they could do it. Like, you know, you know what, what I'm talking about, Bill. You could do it really quick, right? Sure. Well, say something, will you? I, you're talking. They want to hear you. Well, I mean, I, yes, I know I'm talking, but I asked you a question. You don't give me and an I answer. I just gave you an answer. Okay, thank you. They wanted to know what you wanted to tell them. I did. I already did. I know you told yeah. them. Yeah. Anyway, this the costume we... wasn't too bad. The only problem I had... Oh, so now I can't talk. Be quiet, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he did. I asked you a question. You don't answer me. So I did shut. answer it. Well, good. Shut up. Yeah. So anyway... So this is how they did it. Yes. Tell them. No, I can't. You were talking. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Can I leave now? Go ahead. No, no, you're finished. Go ahead. Are you done? Your scene's yeah, he's over a, with. No, he's away somewhere in the left field. Your, your, your scene's over with. Move on, will you? <laughs> anyway, the costume wasn't too bad. Um, the only problem I had walking up and down, you know, going like up and down the stairs. Yeah, the legs look really stiff. Like well, not, no, no, no. They weren't the legs, though, oh. like the bottom of the skirt. Oh, okay. Right. And I could not go up oh, and down. Stairs. So Gil Gerard, the one who played Buck Rogers, <laughs> when I had to go inside the ship, he had to pick me up and say, so oh, I feel like you're going to fat. I said, how few, Gil? I'm, you know how many times I told him a half word? And then it's he a family around, show. Sorry. Be careful. Oh, I'm sorry. What am I doing? See, am I disturbing you? No, go ahead. Okay, then. H have you kept any of your um, costumes or props from any of the shows? Have you kept anything? Or? Actually, I did have a tricky costume for about ten years in my oh. home, but it was falling apart. So, uh. so I got rid of it and sold it to somebody. And I was looking for someone to restore it. I had a guy that was going to do you it for five. You never called me. Well, I didn't know you then. Yes, you did. When? 50, 25 years ago? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't know you. Anyway, um, they, I found a guy who was going to restore it, and uh, he didn't want to do it, ever, and so I got rid of it, because it was, you know, the rubber kind of disintegrate, right. and all the pieces over here, they kind of break up, mm -hmm. they break off, and uh, so I just got rid of it. Now everybody want to know, well, where was the costume? I wish I knew it. I could do this, I could do that. I said, yeah, where were you when I needed you, you know? So. Uh, the Planet of the Apes uh, was a lot of fun. Yeah. I got to, oh, like I said before, I got to work with Charlton Heston. He was a very, very skinny guy. And on, on, um, on, we played on, uh, I guess we were filming at the ranch, Fox Ranch, in Malibu Canyon. In the afternoon, he used to run, like exercising. Like, he really needed to lose weight. You know, he, didn't, he was so skinny. Um, and then I did a movie called um, Indiana Jones. Yeah, that's the one that I, I played. I did all the stunt work for a short round. I doubled him for about six months, going back and forth everywhere. Uh, and that's the one I almost uh, got drowned in, in the river. Right, I, I got stuck under the raft. Yeah, so you got stuck under a raft? Yes, then, I'm oh. not, I don't swim. I'm not a swimmer. And I told the guy, I said, look, I don't swim from here to there. He said, oh, don't worry about it. We're going to put the thing on you, the vest, you know, what you call the May West, whatever they call it. He says, if anything happened, don't panic. You should pull on the string. I said, okay. So we got in a raft, and we're going down the river. It was a Tuolumne River not near San, uh, Sacramento, California. The water temperature was 55 degrees, and the outside was 105. So every time we got in a raft, you're going up and down, you know, the water hits your face is like shivering. So I, I have this my hand on, on the rope. I'm, you know, they said, don't panic by pulling the rope. I said, okay. So we went down a little hole like this, and he says, he goes down and comes up, levels, levels off, and he keeps going. I said, okay, no problem. And I'm in front there, one hand here, and one hand over here, and the other two, um, Harrison Ford, and uh, the double, the stunt double, they were in the back. So the rafter went down in the hole, 
it came up and it kept coming up and it kept flipped upside down. So I was underneath. And I said, wait a minute, what am I should I should I do now? And I kept pulling on this rope. And nothing's doing nothing is happening. So finally I got I didn't get really mad, but I got a really angry really hard and things <laughs> comes up. And I was like underneath a hair pocket. And the only thing I could see on, on top of me was like yellow. Because the bottom of the raft was yellow. And I'm waiting to, for somebody to come and get me out because I didn't know I didn't know what to do, is if I should let it loose or just hang on. So the guy came over and he grabbed me and says, Oh, well, I was pulling on the legs and you don't want to let it go. I said, What are you talking about pulling my legs? I didn't feel anybody pulling anything. He said, I'm just worrying about it, you know, what to do. So he got me out and um, Spielberg found out uh, because he was in London and we were filming the second unit in California. He found out that I, you know, that I fell under the water. He says, I don't want Felix to do any more water work because I need him to finish the film. Because I was, we were together in the film for six months. We went from California to Macau, from there to uh, India, from India to England, and England back to California. And as a matter of fact, we, when we were doing a raft scene, um, Harrison Ford, he was in the hospital because he hurt himself. He hurt his back. So we had to do all the second unit, all the stunt work. And that's when Spielberg found out, he says, well, I don't want him to do any more work because of the, I don't need him to finish the show, to finish the film. And Spielberg is one of the greatest directors. Uh, he knows exactly when he comes on the set, he knows exactly what to get because he does the homework the night before at the office. You know, he does all the whatever he wants, the next day comes and he never howls at you, never get mad at anybody, we had a lot of fun. So it was, it was great to work with him. And George Lucas is different. George, uh, he's not like, like a Spielberg. He's a little more kind of back, he's strictly money man. He, he could say hello to him, good morning, whatever, good afternoon, and when he sees him, he just sit. Uh, but Spielberg just sits and talks to you for a year, if you're not working. And then he told me, he says, hey, Felix, if you were this much shorter, I could use my sangadine tea. I'm still Aww. waiting. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. I don't think it will. Well, in two hours from now, yeah, you, two, and, I, you huh? and I are supposed to do something over at the falls. Yeah, really. You're going to go first, then I'll see if I could follow you. <laughs> Wait a minute. I no, no, no. I figured we could go over there and do something. What no, do you no, think? No, no, no. A little whatever. water work or yes, something? Yes, I know. Yes. So that's a big leg to fall in. Yeah, well, I have a rope. I know you have a rope. You could have it. You could, yeah, you could use it. I'll, I'll tie around your leg. Oh, okay. That's fair. No, you it's... No, no, no. Uh, anyway... Uh, <laughs> Well, I think that's that. What that's what makes. I think that's why maybe your career has been so long, and you've done so much, is that you're able to adapt to to so many situations, and you know, so many directors that you've worked with, and it seems like you you, you get a really good read on them and what they want. So I, I, think, I worked yeah. with some really nice, nice, nice people, nice yeah. directors, producers, yeah. very, very nice. Uh, there were, you know, honesty was there, the professionalism was there. Everybody had to be profess. Uh, pro it had to do, uh, the job has to be done right under the film. If something's wrong, you know, they never, put, you know, and put it on the screen to see because people see the mistakes. But um, also I did an episode of Bonanza. I don't know if you people have watched it. Uh, House and the Leprechaun. That's, that's the best, the best TV show that Bonanza put together. A lot of fun. We had a lot of fun beating up on horse. You know, a big guy, about three, four hundred pounds. We climbed on him, beat him up. And, I don't know, you know, that show comes on every year on St. Patrick, either day before or a couple of days later. Uh, it's very, very funny. So I really, uh, really enjoy it. And I work with a lot of comedians. I work with Ray Skelton. I work with Jonathan Winder. Uh, I work with um, Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis was a very funny guy. In the morning, uh, when we got to the studio at NBC, the director kept telling us, say, you know, guys, uh, when Mr. Lewis comes in the set, don't stop talking to him. Don't talk to him. Because he was the kind of guy that he loved to sit and talk to you. And he didn't care about going to work. So the director kept telling him, don't talk to him. You say good morning. If it's in the morning, you say good morning. If it's in the afternoon, say good afternoon. And just let him go. And uh, 
Uh, he used to pull some uh, come tricks, and he used to go to the dressing room, some, you know, the guest dressing room. Uh, sometime he gets a big scissor and cut all the people's ties, and then he give them a couple thousand dollars and say, hey, go buy some more. That's the kind of guy he was. And then he had a, a football, they used to throw against the backdrop. You know, he, he was like a little kid. That's, what he, that's how he act like, like a, little, like a kid, playing, having fun. So, okay, Hedy, we have any questions? Do you have anything else? Or yeah, did you, like you want to take, did you want to take some, some questions yeah, from we'll the uh, audience? Are you Anybody? done with me? Or? Am I done with you? You want to ask a question? <laughs> well, um, no, no, I've asked you plenty of questions. Oh. You never Does anyone them. have any questions? There's a mic right yeah, there. Yeah, what's that? So we're going to go, go way back again. Uh, when you were on Star Trek, were, were you the only little person who was dressed as a Telosian, or were there... A were Star there... Trek? No, it was more, it was, a, I think it was three or four of us. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. three or four. I don't remember. Uh, it was me and Jerry, Billy, and Frank. I think four of us. Oh. And we had a lot of fun in the original Star Trek because... We had these masks put on our heads, and we couldn't even talk to each other. We couldn't hear each other talking because everything was blocked, all glued around you. Know? We used to do like sign language while we would eat. I don't know what we were talking about anyway. We, um, yeah, it was four of us there. And I, I know it was 54 years ago, so it was a long time ago, but just anything else you could tell us about any other stories from Star Trek would be, Star would be Trek. appreciated. You yeah. know what? I was like brand new in the business. Right. Yeah, uh, two years, I guess. You're, you're, you'd been in L.A. about two years. Well, I moved to L.A. in 62, and I... Right. Uh, and that was 64? Yeah, it was a long, long time ago. Yeah. When I joined my union, it was $110, and that was about 2000 So I, I, I had a good deal. Uh, yeah, um, I don't really know too much because I didn't get too involved with them. Right. I just, you know, just work with the people. You don't say hello, good morning, and, you know, and then you go home and come back the next day. Right. But I remember that I worked with the Jeffrey Hunter, uh, he was the uh, and uh, Spock, uh, what's Leonard his name? Nimoy. The one passed away, Nimoy. Nimoy. Uh, I think uh, Jeffrey Hunter's wife told him not to do the show because uh, well, nothing was going to happen, and then he passed away. Uh, that's all I remember about. Thank you. But thanks so much. Yes. Um, you worked on Sleepball. Yeah. yeah, the dings. Oh my God, that was funny. <laughs> Any funny stories about that, or working with? Uh, well, the only fun was the yeah working with baseball. Uh, we were coming out hunt from underground on the, like a teeterboard, yeah. and all of a sudden it's, it's, you see nothing, you sands, right? It comes with some robber and they, they push you up and you come from underground. You're supposed to keep your eyes open. I can't do that because the sand is going to go in your eye. But the fun part was uh, John Candy, did a barf, half a dog or whatever. He says one day on his birthday, he screamed really loud. While we were filming, he screamed, God damn it, what am I doing on my birthday, pulling the goddamn trunk? You know, really loud. And uh, Mel says, John, what's wrong with you? He says, yeah, look what I'm doing on my birthday. Why do I have to do this, you know? So by Mel, it was really funny, funny guys. Uh, I really enjoyed work with him. I, I understand he wants to redo another movie. Um, if Moranis comes out of, out of retirement, he said, I want to do another movie. It's called, the title's called Spaceball 2, Looking for More Money. That's the, that, <laughs> that's the title that he wants to do. I don't think Rick Moranis is going to come out of retirement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he lives, I think he lives in Vegas. I haven't, I would like to see him before either me dies or he dies. I want to take, say hello to him. Je I had no chance to talk to Jerry. Jerry lives in Vegas too, but I never had a chance. Pat Morita, yeah, I had his phone number, his private phone number. And I kept for a year and all of a sudden I went to try to call him. His wife and he passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. I never had a chance to talk to him. Uh, I live in Vegas, so we have a lot of retired actors and singers. So they're all there. Uh, yeah. Uh, my favorite character on the Africa movie, of course, Cousin Ed. Um, how was that character presented to you? Um, any stories about that? What? How, 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 you, how you became, like, how you oh, uh, ended uh, up. Oh, do I got the job? Ed? Yeah. Oh, you know, that was funny. That was, it wasn't re really, really easy. 
Um, my agent sent me, uh, she sent me on a, an interview on Friday night, like a, it was like a five, five o'clock. I arrived at the studio, I go in, you know, inside an office and there were two gentlemen talking to each other and I walk in, they look at me, they look at each other, they look at me again and say, that's it? Uh, come back Monday, you got the job. And they didn't say anything. They didn't tell me, what, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, that's how it happened. Yeah, that's it. You got the job. Come back on Monday. It's pretty easy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a hairy job ever since. <laughs> yes, it, it was, yeah. Hi, Bill. Yay. How you doing? Good. See, so you're putting a, put a friend to go to sleep. <laughs> yep. Samantha, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> I see you sleeping. Oh, we have a question. Yes. Oh, Bewitched, it was very, very nice. Uh, really not beautiful people. I mean, uh, her husband was uh, uh, the direct, he directed the show. I did two episodes with uh, Elizabeth, was a wonderful lady. Yeah, very, very nice people. You know, in the 60s and 70s, they were nice. You know, you got to work like Adam's family, because it was a family. You know, we never, we never had any problem, you know, uh, we got along together. Everybody got along with each other. Not like you and me. Yeah, like uh, you work with this guy here. Uh, anyway, I, it was it was really nice. Uh, every one, every show that I've done, and I just did the job and go home. A lot of people say, "Oh, did you get anything? Did you do this? Did you do that?" So I can't get any special Star Wars, man. You won't even allow to have a camera on Star Wars. On Saturday. Yeah. That's top secret. Huh? My favorite character? Himself. I don't know. Um, I did a movie called The Blackbird. There was a remake of The Maltese Falcon. And uh, I was played the part of uh, Sidney, what was his last name? I never remember. Uh, Lit Litvak, I think? Yes, Litvak? yeah. yeah I had a lot of dialogues. I played a German, German officer. I'm looking for the blackbird because there's a lot of diamonds in it and they didn't do anything for me um, the reason they didn't do anything is because they um, they released it was uh, an x-rated movie together with an x-rated movie and then George Siegel and the producer they would have a lot of problem one day George Siegel went to the producer's office he destroyed the whole office and he said send me the bill and I'll pay for it because they would have like a friction like well that's my show that's my show that's, it's like ego trip you know so it didn't really do very much. Uh, that's the reason I don't have any picture with me because nobody knows what it is. But it was a wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, do you think that um, like that would ever get released? That film, like on like maybe a DVD or Blu-ray? Do I think? don't know if it will be released, okay. but I I think you could find it. You could yeah. find it on Amazon. You could find it. Okay. Almost anywhere. Okay, so then it, there is like there are copies. Well, I'm pretty there. sure there's a copy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I once I read about that, I was I, I need to see it. So because it's it's a comedy. It was, it it was a like very a... funny comedy. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. know, for example, uh, we filmed at um, Paramount Studio, and we went. To, we used to go to lunch, George and I, and a couple other people. We go out for an hour, an hour and a half, come back, and the assistant director is pacing back and forth, back and forth. And George says, "What's the problem?" He said. The guy said, hey, George, you're an hour and 15 minutes late. I said, well, I'm going to go to my dressing room and play my banjo, and I'll be there another half an hour later. What are you going to do about it? That's what George Siegel, yeah. So, uh, but we had, we, we That's had a lot why of That's why he's never on time. Yes, George, he didn't care. Him and his little marijuana, whatever, was smoking, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yes? Uh, any, any good stories about Return of the Jedi? Return of the Jedi? Yeah. They like to hear them. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just Felix, yeah. Felix, they would, this is an interview, just so you know. Wait, 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 wait. They would like to know. How about, much is going to cost me? Are you hey, my agent? No, it's going to be oh, about I'm 20 gonna bucks. Oh, I'm going to tell them if you shut up. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> They're like, be quiet, don't let me talk, because I'll tell them. I'm just. Yeah, trying. The Return of Jedi was fun. Um, we had, uh, it was myself and three other little guys. We went to London to, um, to get a special costumes made, special fittings, because we had to do a lot of flying. And uh, when we came back, was another little guy was shooting his mouth. Oh, they went to London. They don't know this. They don't do that. So one day 
he went to a, one of the hot house in a location in a mountain. So we put a boulder in front of the door. <laughs> and, and we kept throwing rocks. It was hot. And he was inside it. I don't know, he must have lost 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Uh, we kept throwing rocks. He was son of a bitch. He's going to show you what shooting your mouth and tell us we don't do this and that. So we took care of him. Then he quit. So he quit the job because, no, a lot of the little people on that show, they quit because they couldn't take it. They just could not handle uh, the pressure. They could not handle the job. And uh, they just, some of them used to fall asleep. They just lay on the ground and uh, while we were filming because they blend with their leaves, you know, <laughs> same, you know, same color. So they just lay down. As long as you don't move, you're fine. So, but when, they, when we were doing a scene, when they had all explosion, the uh, what do we what they did? They monocle pla paper plates. They put like they have, they have to let us know when the uh, explosion was going to be because we were running everywhere. So they put number one, number two on the on the, on the, on the tree. So we're running around. If if you run over one of the stores, they'll blow you to pieces because there was like five, ten pounds, really big. So one day we're doing this film and. We got, you know, we get killed and just die, and, and all of a sudden you get up and start walking towards the camera. And one of the guys said to me, hey, Felix, you're melting. I said, what are you talking about? You know, because the, the stuff, you know, when the explosion went up and it came down, it landed on you, on the, on the fur. So I'm not really, I'm melting a little bit, but I didn't feel it. You know, I didn't feel like a flame. And the guy, I was molding, you know, you know, kind of burning up a little bit. All my costumes melting away. I didn't feel anything. Hey, Felix, you're burning up. Um, there a lot of there went a lot of funny things went on, and uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of a lot of nice things went on. Also, what they did is they set up a, a basketball for the little people. Two motels, and was was it? one in Oregon and one in California. So we took the whole place, and we had lots lots of fun. Right across the river, across the road, there was a beautiful uh, restaurant. At night, you come down to work and take a quick shower. You go across the street, have a dinner, have a couple of drinks, go to your room, go to sleep. Six in the morning comes and a big school bus comes to pick you up and go up in the mountain again. We did it for about three weeks. And then when I went to see the film, it was hardly anything. There was nothing in it what we did. We did some really a lot of work, a lot of beautiful work. I guess Lucas didn't like it because we're too comic, too funny. But I found out that they released, I think they're selling a DVD with the old... Uh, yeah, I like to get one. The extra footage, oh, yeah, that would be great. Footage, yeah. Yeah. At least you, you can all, see it, right? Yeah. You can also tell me did Howard the Duck. Oh yeah, Howard the Duck. Oh my God, that's the one I separated my shoulder. That's right. <clears throat> okay, Howard the Duck. They flew me from L.A. Actually, Burbank, California, to San Francisco. Uh, they took me straight on the set. It was kind of nine o'clock in the evening. They got me dressed with this old stupid costume and. And I'm doing a scene, I'm in the middle of the hallway, in the middle of the street, and it's supposed to be a garbage truck coming towards me, a trash car, a trash truck. They were filming this way, the truck is coming this way, and I'm supposed to jump out of the way to let them go through. So the director, he kept telling me, uh, Felix, uh, can you let the truck come a little closer? And I kept saying no, because I don't know how far the truck is. I can see. It's only, my eye was like a pinhole, like you see all blurry, and everything was like, he had a high beam on on my face. And I didn't want to get run over by 50,000 pounds of whatever, well, you know, I didn't want to get run over. So he says, okay, action. And I just got a couple of seconds, and I jumped over. They made, they made me do five takes. The last one, I led to them inside the doorway in the mattress, and I separated my, I didn't know what it was, I separated my shoulder. I couldn't get up. Because there was something hurting really bad, and I told the guys, I said, can you help me? Uh, so, okay, he will help me out. And you know what they did? They used the first take. The first take was the best one. But they made me do five altogether, and that's when I got hurt, the last one. They used the first one. So, they, they helped me take the costume off, and they take me to my hotel, and they put an ice bag, I thought I was going to freeze to that. The next morning, they took me to the hospital, he had an x-ray, and the guy says, oh, welcome to the football team. I said, what are you talking about? Said, oh, you separated your shoulder. I, didn't ever, I never heard that word before, because I never got hurt. 
oh yeah, you, uh, do you want a surgery or not? I said, no. I said, I'm going home. They sent me home. And then about a week later, I received a letter from a lawyer. Well, we didn't hire you because they wanted to say, I'm not going to sue anybody, you know? So the funny part was, when I was on home, flying home, I'm sitting between these two beautiful girls in the flight, and like this, all benched up, and I couldn't walk, couldn't move anywhere. And they're like, they sent me a letter and said, well, we didn't hire you. Somebody else will give you the job. I said, oh, I have nothing to do with this. Whoever hired him, I don't care. Six months later, uh, it went back, and you know, it was okay. But they, I don't know why they're worried about right away, man. Who's going to sue us or whatever, you know? So that's what happened to Howard the Doc. Yeah. They made me take five takes. They used the first one. But the best one was the first one, number one. Yeah. So I just want to say one thing. I've known Felix for a very, very long time. And he's probably one of the biggest stars you'll ever meet. He truly is. He's, uh, he's great. Yeah. You owe me 20 bucks for that. I'll pay you, <laughs> I'll pay you 50 if you no, run I out of your money. Yes. I was just going to cost me to take care of this guy. Uh, what? what? Well, you know, we're talking about the show those days. Um, we, you know, the Adams Family, the monster, they got canceled the same time. Yeah, they were two years. We were running on CBS, yeah, right. and they were running ABC. So we got canceled the same time. Uh, Buck Rogers got canceled, too, because the second year was terrible. You know, they, uh, they changed a lot, really bad. I mean, the first year was great. The reason they canceled, they say, because it was too expensive. It was like a million dollars per episode. 1979 or whatever was, uh, there was a lot of money. Yeah, well, you know, well, that, was, that was one of the problems with, with the Munsters and uh, Adam's family. But one of the reasons was Batman came out. Mm. And that knocked out the Munsters right there. Ratings just plummeted. Yeah. Apparently it did for the bean counters, and that changed everything. And that they had short runs because of that. Uh, it was what was popular at that point. I mean, they do it now the same way. Our shows have very short runs, and you don't know why, but they usually contract them out. But it was it was really Batman that took the monsters out. Yeah. Well, once it dropped, next, <laughs> you know, it was just yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it happened a lot. They were running them out, and the movie, at that point too, the movie, uh, the the movie, and television industry was really dramatically changing. Mm -hmm. You had the TV, you had the film studios, and television was still young, and they were competing against each other. So that had a lot to do with it. Happened to be the the the, the movie machine, the Hollywood machine was changing. But Drastic. There was a Halloween special, right, with the Adams family. Halloween the TV, special, yeah. yeah, the TV movie. So that was yeah, kind they, of, I it wasn't was that really nineteen seventy seven. Yeah, think. it was seventy seven. And it wasn't really that great. And they, they videotaped. Uh, they used uh, 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 my cousin over there. They used uh, the real lady, uh, Lisa, right, because she was old, too old. And then yeah. they used a baby little girl to play her daughter. Same thing with Pugsley. Right. And really, they didn't go very well. Nobody liked it. Uh, they, they, they videotaped, and that's it, and just disappeared. So, but you know what? It changes. You know, the, the times have changed, and I don't think the good stuff is never going to come back. You know, the good old Western. What was that? Uh, they, um, they, make some good, they made some good movies. Uh, and now they're trying to remake everything. I mean, like I said, if it's, not, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I mean, you know, leave it alone. I mean, look at the Planet of the Apes. How many times they're trying to redo it over and over and over? They don't have no, no new ideas, you know. They, nobody has any idea. But everybody seems to like it, you know. They're, like now they, they say, uh, uh, well, yeah. The new? You know what? I tell you the truth. I think I only saw maybe one. A couple of them, yeah. But they, I think they did a good job. 
Uh, I didn't get I didn't get to see much of it. I don't like I said I don't know. I haven't been in a movie theater in the past 45 years. I don't. The only one I went when they did the Howard the Duck. My wife and I we took our, our youngest daughter. She was like a uh, no, she was adopted. Not the the one we adopted she was 15 months old. We went to Universal Studio to see the premiere, and all of a sudden Howard is getting beat. And my, my daughter started screaming really loud, they're beating up my daddy, they're beating up my daddy. So my wife, so embarrassed, she had to take it out of the studio, out of the theater, right? I thought it was really crazy, stupid. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of different than it was, you know, so. Do, do you plan to um, do anything now? Like, are you, if someone asked you to be in a film, would you do it, or? You're just happy doing like conventions and you know what? Um, depend uh, if I'm interested in something, I might do. If I'm not, I don't think I would do it. Yeah. Um, I, I love to do these things. You know, I travel everywhere. Um, What's I've, your favorite place that you've been to so far that you, you like? You mean a convention? Yeah, a convention, country. Like, do you go to Europe or? Oh yes, oh, yeah. I yeah. I've done a convention in Japan. Oh, awesome! And I had a you did Italy. Buck Rogers. Photos right there, and I asked the people, the people nobody knew what Buck Rogers is because they never showed Buck Rogers in Japan. But he talked about Star Wars, they go absolutely nuts. I go, oh, yeah, Star Wars, Star Wars. But Buck Rogers, nothing. So they don't, I've, been, I've, um, I've done the shows in England, Italy, and Germany. That's uh, awesome, yeah. You know, and I, I love to do it because. Uh, you keep yourself motivated, and uh, I have a lot of friends in Vegas. Say, hey, Felix, what are you doing? You're getting old, and wh why are you want to do this? And you know, what are you going? I said, because I love it. It keeps me motivated, and I don't like to sit in there and, and uh, watch TV. I'm not the type of guy that I like to sit. I, I just I got to do something, you know, to keep going. And I love to do it. I like to meet old friends. I like to meet new friends. So that's the reason I do it. No. Yes. You work with Don Blocker and uh, Lauren Gray on Bonanza. Do you have any Lauren Gray stories? Don Block. Uh, Dan Block. Yeah. Well. <coughs> no. Well, I don't want to say anything about Dan Blocker. He was. He was a guy. A funny guy. Dan Blocker loved fast cars. Um, they. Uh, you know, those days when Bonanza was on, they were sponsored by General Motor. And anything you want from General Motors, you just have to give them a dollar to sign a contract. They'll give you anything you want. So Dan Block used to get a bunch of beautiful engines shipped to Italy, have a beautiful car built. And he says one day, they, uh, he, was, he, he came from Texas. Also, he was a school teacher. Uh, he said he, he loved to drive fast cars. He wasn't driving home, going to Texas. And he even beat the highway patrol when they were putting the chains on the ground to so stop him. So, uh, but he had another joke one day at the set, and uh, uh, he made a really funny remark. His wife was sitting, came and visit, and he's sitting next to this guy. He says, he said to the other friend, and the other guy says, what do you think about the lady over there? Uh, yeah, I, whatever, you know, yeah. And then he all of a sudden he said, you know, that's my wife. And the guy couldn't even find a hole to jump in and bury himself. He was so embarrassed. I mean, that's what kind of joke Dan Block used to fall a pool. Mike Landon was different. Um, I did a show with Mike Landon, the last one before he passed away. Uh, we were filming the show in Kansas. Uh, um, in Kansas, yes. And uh, it was called Where Pigeon Goes to Die. It was the TV show that he did. And then nobody knew that he was sick. Um, he was very, very, very sick. He had a lot of problem with it. But he made everybody laugh all day, all day. Every day we worked together because he directed the shows. And he even brought back the cameraman from, from um, Bonanza. Uh, he used the same crew. And he, he was a, uh, a very good guy because he kept like a union deal. He paid his people union. Like, you know, everybody wants to go, oh, yeah, oh, we want to do a show. I could give you a couple of dollars. And you don't want to know. You know, it's non union. But he respected the rules and everything. And then about two, three months later, he passed away. So nobody knew that he was sick. Yeah. That's all I know by Bonanza. Bonanza was fun. I really enjoyed work on that show. It was funny. It's one of the best shows I ever put out. Yeah. Great. 
Well, um, do we have any more questions? I think. No, I think that's yeah, one more. Anyone? No? Okay. We'll definitely go visit Felix. He's yeah, just kind of sell all. Go over talk. to the table and see him. Yeah. Come see. Oh. Him. That's what I usually do. Yeah. I either and go I to this him. table or I'll go to my table. But yeah, and then he comes over to my table. Yes. And then I tell him to go back to his table, which I have to go to my table. So. Go on your table. <laughs> he wants. To, he wants to ask him. He's he's going to ask him. Ask him. I don't know. We met somewhere. Where where was that? I, I needed to move my luggage, and you were there. <laughs> I didn't know I was a competing with a comedian. You know, oh, it, mm. we had the characters out, and all of a sudden, you know, oh, yes. we were the same oh, size oh, as Gorgo. I need, never mind Gorgo. Uh, I need to say something about Bob Hope, uh, Adam's family. Um, one day, we were, you know, we were working, and I'm sitting, but they made this little tiny little director chair. I was all dressed up, and ready to go on. And all of a sudden, the director called me and said, hey, Felix, you ready to come on the set? Yeah, I, I got up and walked away. And all of a sudden, I heard somebody says, there he goes, Frankie Lane, to pay. So I went to work, and then they cut. I said to the director, who, uh, who was the guy? I said, there, there he goes, Frankie Lane, to pay. Because Frankie Lane was bald. I don't know, you guys know who Frankie Lane was? The singer, right? So anyway, he said, yeah, that was Bob Hope, came and visit. There goes Bob, you know, Frankie Leonard Toupay. Uh, we had a lot of fun because we used to go visit each other. Uh, uh, Mr. Ed was filming the same lot, same studio. Uh, Green Acres, we were all the same at the Hollywood studio. And so when you're not working, you just go visit your friends next door or whatever they were, and they'd come and visit us. And we were like, it was wonderful, wonderful work, uh, the, you know, in the 60s. It was really nice, yeah. To answer your question, um, I was doing a television show and we had a lot of the characters out and we would always have guest stars on the show. And Felix was one of those guest stars. Unfortunately, he, he signed on to do the, do the show and he's never unsigned, so he's been with me ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to get rid of him. Um, you know, it's was just, that you in know, uh, Tennessee? That was one of those places. Yeah, one, when you well, came you did back, Warlock, right? Yeah. Okay. I had Dick on the show. I had right. you on the show. So anyway, um, <laughs> are we. Uh, you still here? Yeah, I'm still here. All right. Thank you so much. Do we have anything? Uh, well, please? it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. You had thank so many you. wonderful stories for us. Thanks a thank lot. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of the 2018 Niagara Falls Comic Con. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more. And let us know below what you think of this video. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.